ever played a, a game with a young child? Say Candyland. I played Candyland with my nephew. I'll be honest with you, I never won. Not because I just had poor luck in dealing the cards and every time I came up, you know, it was the, the one picture of the person that's at the very beginning and I had to keep going back to the beginning. No, it was because as I played with my nephew, the rules changed all the time. He was moving forward and advancing to the end while I, for some reason, was moving backwards. No matter how hard I tried, no matter how hard I, I tried to understand the rules he continued to add to the game, no matter what, I could not win. And I tried several games to do this. I thought for sure, as a 40-year-old as a guy, I should be able to figure out Candyland. Never won. Once. Then again, if you're changing the rules all the time, almost on every turn, it's pretty hard to lose. Do you still do that as an adult? Just think, you're, you're driving down the freeway and you look at the car that you're passing or the car that's probably passing you, Right? And, and you see the person and they're kind of like this. And what do you say? I'm going to slow down. I'm not driving me in that. How dangerous and irresponsible that person is. They should put their phone down. And then quickly you've got to look up the address to where you're going or make sure that it's up on your map. And so I do it quickly. I do it safely. Right? I, I'm paying attention for the most part. Just, just real quick. And suddenly, what has happened? The rules have changed, haven't they? The rules have changed because it's, it's not right for them to do it, but I can do it because I do it safely, and suddenly it's okay for me, but not for them. Do you know why you do that? I think it's because we, we like to pat ourselves on the back every once in a while and, and be able to look at others and say, well, I'm a, I'm a little bit better than that. I don't sit on my phone while I'm, I'm driving and, and text out long emails or anything like that. When I do it, it's, it's safe because I'm, I'm just for a, just a real quick moment doing it. Which makes me a, a little bit better in my own mind, or at least good, and not like that person. Right? And we do it in, in all different aspects and areas of life. Uh, we do it at school. We do it at work. We do it in our neighborhood. We do it with random people we drive by. We do it. And in doing that, we, and we start to ask ourselves the wrong questions. We're told in our parable or in our, in our gospel lesson this morning, about a man who came and asked Jesus a question. He was a smart guy. We're told he was an expert in the law. Right? He, he knew the law of Moses forward and backwards, and, and he was one to whom people would go to and say, help me understand this part of God's word. Right, so he had an understanding of the Ten Commandments. He had an understanding of the, the civil and the ceremonial and worship laws that applied to the Israelites. He, he knew all of these things and was able to apply them to life. And so he comes to Jesus and asks what, for an expert in the law, seems to be a bit of a ridiculous question. Because as an expert in the law, you'd expect he would know the answer to it, right? He, he asked Jesus, what do I have to do in order to inherit eternal life? And Jesus says, well, what does the law say? What does, what does God's word say, right? And the man says, well, love the Lord your God, right? And, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, good. Good answer. Go and do it. Now, perhaps it was because he felt a little embarrassed that he had asked, and, and, and Jesus had answered his question so easily, he, he felt the need to justify himself. So he said, who's my neighbor? 
As you look at the summary of the law, Jesus himself summarized it. And just as you, you hear the words of the expert in the law, you could very easily summarize the law as one word, right? Love. It shouldn't be a difficult question then to figure out who to love. So why, why would this expert in the law then ask, well, who's my neighbor that I should be showing love to? What was he really asking? Who do I have to love? As an expert in the law, they had gotten to the point where really they would look and say, there are only certain people I have to, that this really applies to. Right? As a Jew, they would say, I, I can show this, this close love to my fellow Jews, to my close family and friends, but that love, there's a boundary to it. Which is why he asked Jesus who my, my neighbor is. Who exactly do I have to love when I say love that I have to love my neighbor as myself? So Jesus answers with a story, right? Let me tell you a story. And the story is pretty easy to figure out, right? There's a, a Jewish man who's walking to Jericho. He, he gets ambushed on the way. He's left for dead. A priest, a Levite, walk by. They see him. And each one does the same thing, right? They, they cross to the other side of the road. They walk by and they don't help. Then a Samaritan comes along. Do you remember the, the relationship the Samaritans and the Jews had? They did not have one. Right? The Samaritans hated the Jews, and the Jews hated the Samaritans. It would be like seeing your worst enemy lying in the gutter, and what would you do? Do I help them? No, wait, do you know what they've done to me? And the Samaritan is the one that comes and he helps, right? He doesn't just help and bandage his wounds there. He takes him to an end, pays all the expenses, and to the point where now at the end of the story, Jesus asks the expert in the law, which of them was the neighbor, right? And the, the expert in the law is forced to say, well, the, the man who showed mercy, and Jesus says, well, go and do likewise. Love God. Love your neighbor. Go and do likewise. What the man wanted to hear was that there was a limit to his love. And what he heard from Jesus was what? There's no limit. Right, Jesus changes the question, doesn't he? He doesn't answer the man's question as far as who his neighbor is. In essence, he changes the question, well, who should you be a neighbor to? Right? The, 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 the expert in the law would like to be able to say, you know what? I can be loving to these people. To my, my friends, to people I owe a favor to, to my relatives. And you know what? When you do that, how easy is it to love? It's easy to show people love, especially those that love you. Then the expert in the law could do what? Pat himself on the back. Talk about how loving he is. How he loves his neighbor as himself. Because, well, I've, I've shown neighbors to my family, to, to relatives, to close friends. I'm loving. I'm, I'm fulfilling God's law. And Jesus changes that perspective to one that says, it's not a matter of who your neighbor is, but who you're going to be a neighbor to. Right? So that now you look and go, the, the expert in law might say, I have to be kind and loving to a Samaritan who hates me? The child of God today might say, do I have to be kind and loving to that person at school who's mean and has told lies about me? Who has made me the, the butt of their, their jokes? I have to be loving to them? 
I should be the one that shows love to the co-worker who's taken all the credit for all that I've done. For the boss that handed me the pink slip and told me I was fired, even though I've been doing some pretty good work. I have to be kind and loving to the ISIS fighter who's killing innocent women and children and beheading my brothers and sisters in Christ. Loving to them? Right, you can go down the list and think of plenty of people that it would be really, really hard to love and be a neighbor to. And what's even more difficult is that I go down that list and what I end up seeing is just how unloving I am. Because inside of me, what would I like? A limit to my love. I would like to, there to be certain bounds where I can go, you know what? I can love you and I can love you and it's going to be easy to love you so I'll love you but boy, for how you've treated me or the things that you've done to me or the things that you've said about me or just, I don't even know you, but I know what you've done means I don't have to love you. That's what we'd like, isn't it? Because that makes love really, really easy. But that's not the point Jesus is making to the expert in the law, is it? As he tells this story, he's pointing out to, 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 to children of God that the love that we are to have as children of God is one where we love our neighbor to anyone who is close to us. In other words, as I walk through life, my love isn't restricted to people that are easy to love or the people that are closest to me. But my love is for everyone in I come into contact with, regardless of who they are and what they've done and how they react. And I hear that And what I instantly feel is guilt. Because God's law begins to reveal just how unloving I am. I can begin to think of people who, because of how they've treated me, I basically blew them off. People who were unkind with their words, and as a result... Don't listen to them. People that it's real easy to cut out of my life because of what they've said or what they've done. And that's not even going to the extremes, right? Unloving. And I have to go to my God who who shows this unbelievable love for me and say, Lord, you've told me to love you and to love my neighbor And I've failed at loving my neighbor, which means I've also failed at loving you because the way I love you is by doing what you've said, by loving my neighbor. And God responds in the most unbelievable way, doesn't he? You'd think if he were to act the same way you and I do, he would look and say, you don't listen to me. Your efforts at loving others really isn't that much of an effort Why in the world should I love you? In fact, look at all the other acts of rebellion that you see in in your life. Why would I love you of all people? And that's when God comes to us and he says, when you were at your very worst, when you were sinners, God sent Christ. When you were your most unlovable is when God decided to send his son to show his love for you. Right? And we see... Jesus perfectly show love. Not just to those closest to him, right? Not just to, say, his disciples or his mother and father. To to those people that might be easy for Jesus to love, but for the, the people that are really hard to love. He he shows that perfect love to the people that are nailing him to the cross as he assures them they're forgiven for what they're doing. That he isn't holding it against them. Right? He, he shows this perfect love for, for those that are standing nearby to the, the criminal who had done perhaps unspeakable things, horrible things that were worthy enough to receive the worst kind of death sentence in the Roman Empire. 
love that assured him that he would see him again in paradise. Love that looks at you and me with all of our failures to love and says, I love even you. And I forgive you. And it's that undeserved love that our God has for us that now motivates us well, to, to love our God in response. Right? As I see God's unbelievable love, I, my, I can't help but have my heart be filled with, with a, an undying appreciation and thankfulness and, and love for the God who, who saves me. A, a love that now motivates me to, to be a loving neighbor to those around me. What a neat thing it would be, huh? For as people, as they interact with us, to say, he or she always responds in love, regardless of what happens. Right? I see this person, and they, they treat her like, like she's dirt, and, and she responds with love and kindness and patience. This one person did this to, to this person, and, and he chose to respond in love. That's what God calls us to be, isn't it? That our, 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 our lives are marked with Christ's love. Not just to those to whom it is easy to love, but to everyone. Because as children of God, we approach love in a different way, don't we? We aren't looking and saying, what have you done to earn my love? What have you done to deserve my love? Why should I love you, of all people? Instead, as children of God, we're asking, how can I love you? How can I love you? Because I have a God who loves you and who loves me. And what he wants, most, what he wants from me is to show his love to you so how can I love you? How can I be a neighbor to you? And as children of God, you're going to find out in about a half a second, that's really hard, isn't it? Turns out it's really hard to love people who are hard to love. But then again, we've got experience because we're pretty unlovable ourselves. And God in his grace and mercy showed his love to us just so that we could show love, that same love God has for us, to those around us. And as I see my failures, I go back to the God who loves me and that God, that God reminds me of, of, how, of my forgiveness, of his love for me. And he pushes me back out into the world so that I can love my neighbor. It's really hard to win when the rules change. Sometimes it's really hard to win when you know the rules. <laughs> God told this man, this expert in the law, exactly what he needed to hear because all he was doing was constantly changing the rules so he could feel good about himself. And he laid out and helped the expert in the law see exactly what God's law was calling him to do. He's done the same for you and I, hasn't he? We open up his word and we reveal, and he reveals to us all that he's done for us, his, his unbelievable love, so that as we see the things he's called us to be and to do as children of God, in love for our God, we can not only love him, but love others. Amen. Our Savior Lutheran Church is located on the south side of Birmingham off Highway 280. We are on Dunnett Valley Road, about three quarters of a mile east of Treetop Family Adventure and Sports Blast. Our Sunday services begin at 1015 with Sunday School and Bible Class at 9 o'clock. We welcome visitors and hope to see you soon. For more information, please visit our website at OurSaviorBirmingham.com. 
Click on Sermons at the top of the page for a copy of today's service folder. You can also find us online on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.